Now let's talk a little bit about uncontrolled airports. You know, uncontrolled airports come in a tremendous variety from dirt strips like this to airports with airborne uh, firefighters like this. And although much of what we have been talking about has referred to controlled airports, uncontrolled airports probably offer the greatest risk of a collision on a runway. And it's because you have no help from ATC and you are on your own for collision avoidance. Plus, uncontrolled airports often don't have the same level of signage and markings as controlled airports. For instance, this guy is trying to tell us he's got a closed runway and he does it with a skull and a crossbones. Not what you would call conventional signage. Now, your best defenses at uncontrolled airports are to follow proper communications procedures and to always check both directions before you enter or cross any runway. And when you're departing, you should monitor and call on the common traffic advisory frequency before taxiing and before taxiing onto the runway for departure. Now, this will give any landing aircraft a heads up that you're going to be taking the runway soon. Now, when you're inbound, you should monitor that common traffic traffic advisory frequency and call 10 miles out. Also call entering downwind basin final and leaving the runway. Now at many busy VFR airports there is a lot of student training traffic so the common traffic advisory frequency can get very congested. So make your radio calls both precise and concise. You know, if you have ever been to Oshkosh or Sun and Fun during the conventions, you know how good they are about getting lots of airplanes on the ground. Well, that's because everyone is concentrating on what they're doing and following directions and being precise and concise and not cluttering up the frequency with unnecessary information. The key is being very efficient about giving other folks a heads up on your intentions. And at the same time, it's very important that you listen to other pilots on the frequency and develop a mental picture of the traffic around the airport. You know, as in the rest of life, many times listening is more important than talking. But you cannot rely on the radio alone because there's always the possibility that another aircraft may not be radio equipped or the pilot could be on the wrong frequency. So there is just no replacement for carefully looking both directions for traffic before you taxi on any runway. So check that runway before you taxi on it and finally at any airport if you notice that the signage and markings just aren't what they should be, do yourself and other pilots a favor. Encourage the airport operator to provide clear runway hold position markings and signs on all taxiway and runway intersections and the incident you prevent just might be your own.